lesson comes from Romans 8, verses 5 to 6, and Romans 12, verse 2. Hear the word of the Lord. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. And then Romans 12, 2, a familiar passage to many. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to consider these two passages with me and meditate with me just for a few moments on the thought, a renewed mind, a renewed mind. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we thank you, God, that you uh, care enough to send us a word. Our hearts are grateful, Lord. We pray that the word take root in us where it can grow and bring forth fruit. We stand on your truth that says, when it goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so we invite you to do a work in us today. Let me now decrease God and you increase so that this word come forth as you would have it. And Lord God, by this word, let your people be edified even as your name is magnified and you, O oh Lord, are glorified. In the matchless name of Christ Jesus. In Romans Church, Paul takes us through this logical argument of sin versus righteousness. And we did a study on Romans in Tuesday Tuna. Uh, last year. We saw that Paul uh, continues to tell us in this word that we have a choice. We can be the walking dead moving about in the realm of Satan, which is sin and death, or we can choose to be a new creation moving about in the realm of Christ, which is righteousness and life. The dichotomy of sin versus righteousness is something that the apostle struggled with. He spent a lot of time trying to understand the wrestling of the human soul. In chapter 7, he identifies with his audience. He empathizes with them by confessing that even he struggles with doing what is right. The apostle says that he starts each day bent on doing the right thing, but the right things that he desires to do, he does not do. And instead, he finds himself doing the exact opposite. How many of us have that testimony? We set our minds on something. We have our eyes fixed on our goal, and yet we end up doing the exact opposite. Paul says that he ends up doing the very things that he should not and does not want to do. And he exclaims at the end of chapter 7, Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death? And because this is a rhetorical question, he answers it and says, Jesus, Jesus is the one who can deliver me. He is, and, and, and Paul says even more importantly, Jesus is the one who can deliver you. Because Jesus sacrificed himself on Calvary's cross, he has paid your sin debt in full. All you have to do is accept the Lord's gift of salvation that he offers to us freely. This is the message of the gospel. And this was the Apostle Paul's message. Jesus Christ gives us his Holy Spirit to set us free from the law of sin and death. The Apostle has been building his case and he reminds the Jews that God gave the law with a capital L. 
to the Israelites. And until the law, there was no standard in place to guide them. The law, with its various rules and regulations, was given to them to set them apart from the pagan nations that surrounded them. They were to be a people who were governed, uh, who, who lived by the highest discipline and the highest moral behavior. But the law cannot transform the heart. And that is the problem, that is the challenge that we face today when we declare Black Lives Matter. When we hold up our fist and we say we are black and we are proud. When we persist in our proclamation of our equality and our worth and we persist in our protests, we are doing that because we recognize that the law, no matter what legal uh, codes are passed, cannot transform the hearts of people. There will be people who obey the law and there will be people who do not. And unless people's hearts are changed, unless people undergo some kind of transformation and understand that we are all worth have worth because we are a creation of God. When people understand that it doesn't matter what our skin color is, what our ethnicity is, what our family name is, where we were born or, or who we identify with, when people understand that we are all human beings, that is when we will have a transformed society. The law does not, cannot transform the heart, but God can. God can transform. The law was just a yardstick that showed the Israelites their shortcomings. The law proved and human beings, that human beings cannot obey. And so Paul says that the law was made powerless because of the weakness of human flesh. People may be willing, but people are not always able. Our flesh makes demands on us that pull us off track. We may set out to do what is right, but our own desires cause us to do what we want instead of what God wants. So the law was the standard, but it was powerless to save us. The mind governed by flesh is death. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. God sent Jesus to do for us what the law could not do. The word says Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh. Let, uh, just marvel on that for a minute. Just let that uh, run around in your mind. Just, just let that ruminate, uh, uh, marinate, resonate in your spirit. Because this is remarkable. This is wonderful. This is marvelous. We don't understand how God incarnated human flesh. It is a mystery to us, but the creator came in the form of the human he created, not in our perfected state, but in our imperfection, in our tarnished and stained image. With humankind in a fallen state, the creator came in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. No longer the ritual sacrifices of bulls and goats. Jesus came as the once and for all sacrifice. By coming in the likeness of sinful flesh, then crucifying that flesh on the cross, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. Let me say that again. By coming in the likeness of sinful flesh, then crucifying that flesh on the cross, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. So when we choose Jesus 
as our Savior and our Lord, we are set free from sin and death. Ha, that's, a, that's a shout, amen. That's a shout. The crucifixion of the flesh makes it possible for us to no longer live by the flesh, but instead to live by the spirit. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You know, sometimes people say that they don't come to the Lord because they don't want to, they, they want to live first. They want to live first, but they don't understand that you don't have life until you come to the Lord. That's when you start to really live because the spirit of God in the hearts of believers gives us confidence and assurance and security and trust. The spirit of the Lord speaks to the spirit deposit in us and reminds believers that God is our father and we are heirs of the kingdom. We have an inheritance in glory. So that means when we mess up, because we are saved folks, because Jesus has already shed his blood, when we mess up, when we fall down, when we disappoint the Lord, when uh, we don't have to worry, if we get up aimed at doing one thing and we end up doing the exact opposite, we don't have to worry because those in Christ have life and peace. It does not mean that you have no responsibility for your poor behavior. It does not mean that you get a pass. You can just say, oh, the devil made me do it. It means that you own your mistakes and you ask God for forgiveness and then you trust in that forgiveness because the word of God says that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you confess your sin to the Lord, you get a clean slate and you get to start again. It means you have to be authentic though before God and you have to trust his love. When you can do that, you will know true peace. You will know what living really is. The God, uh, that God's spirit can transform you into who God wants you to be. That is amazing. That is marvelous. That is a shout. Amen. God will not make much headway in transforming people who do not want to listen, trust, and obey. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Y'all know when I do this, that's what I'm talking about. Amen transformation into the glory of Christ begins when you change your thinking. Set your mind on things above. If I asked you, if I came over and just asked, what's planted in your mind this morning? What are you thinking today? What, what's planted in you today? God is good. Philippians 4, 8 says, whatever is true and honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report, think on these things. Whatever is contrary to God's word, whatever negativity has taken up residence in your mind has to change because what is fixed in your mind becomes your belief and humans tend to act on their beliefs. You have to think a thing before you do a thing. Free your mind and your body will follow. When we set our minds on the things of the spirit, we can live according to the spirit. And when we live according to the spirit, we are exercising and exemplifying a renewed mind. When you know better, hallelujah, Sister Velma, we talked about this last week, when you know better, then you're supposed to do better. 
if transformation were not possible, we would not be commanded to be transformed. A renewed mind is the impetus for our transformation. Change how you think based on what you know and what you understand in the Word of God. It is in Christ that we live and move and have our being. If we are in Christ, our minds should be new. How do we know? I'm glad you asked. Holy Spirit brings forth fruit from a renewed mind. When your thoughts change, your speech changes, and your actions change, you look and you sound new. It is evident that what's working on the inside is showing on the outside. A renewed mind means having ears and eyes in the spirit realm. A renewed mind is not made dull by its own wisdom, but rather understands that God has shown that this world's wisdom is foolishness. A renewed mind is realizing your identity in God is the only identity that counts. A renewed mind transforms you every day in every experience to reflect the glory of the Lord. A renewed mind is knowing that transformation comes from the Spirit whom Jesus sent to dwell in the heart of every person who believes in Him. It is that Spirit transformation that causes us to look like Jesus. Oh, your family and friends ought to look at you and hear you and go, there's something different about you. When you're following after Jesus, you shouldn't look the same way that you did 10 years ago when you weren't following Jesus. The old folks used to say, my hands look new and my feet did too. I got a new walk and I don't have to wait till I get to glory. I walked through right now in this place. The spirit transformation that happens in those who believe takes us from one degree of glory to another. It is a growth process. We are supposed to be increasing in knowledge and understanding and wisdom. Not human knowledge and understanding and wisdom. God knowledge and godly understanding and godly wisdom. If you are in the same place that you were a year ago, if you don't understand any more about God than you did when you started this walk, if you have not experienced a different aspect of God, if God has not revealed more of himself to you, then you need to check your roots. Every week I pray, let this word take root in us. Firmly rooted people have a word firmly rooted in them. Let me say that again. Firmly rooted people have a word firmly rooted in them. Firmly rooted folks flourish. Firmly rooted folks bear the fruit of the Spirit. We should be growing and we should be blossoming. There's a saying that goes, some people change their ways when they see the light and others only when they feel the heat. I'm telling you, you don't want the heat to come down on you. Jesus is the light. Grab hold of him and get yourself some living water. Transformation happens when you know God's truth, when you understand God's truth and you live by God's truth. You can't just be a hearer of the word. You have to be a doer of the word. What good is getting a word if you're not going to apply it in your life? And the test will come so that you will have to use the lesson that you've learned. Get a word planted in your spirit so that you can address the enemy. You can address the challenge when it comes in your life. And you have to speak that word. Speak into the atmosphere. Speak positivity. Speak life in every situation. God's truth is the one that we need in order to be transformed. We need to understand God's truth and we need to live by God's truth. That's when information 
becomes revelation that leads to transformation. Information that you take in from reading and studying the Word of God must become revelation that you understand more about who God is and who you are in the Spirit of God. And that revelation will lead to transformation. Information becomes revelation that leads to transformation. Don't wait until the heat catches you unprepared. Get yourself prepared now. You know, you can't wait until you get in trouble and then start calling for Jesus if you never had any relationship with Jesus. Why should Jesus show up? You have to cultivate that relationship first. Amen, amen. And then you know that you can call on the Lord in your times of distress, in your times of trouble. He answers because you have already been in relationship. Get yourself prepared now. Gird yourself in truth now so that when the heat comes, you still flourish because you are firmly rooted in the source of nourishment and life. You're supposed to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither even in the heat. Come on. Even in the heat, its leaves do not wither. What is wonderful about the Lord is that you do not have to be perfect to come to him. And I love that. You don't have to have it all together. You can bring all your messy self to God. He wants you to come just as you are. He loves you just as you are. And he wants you to be a part of his family. And when you accept him into your life and into your heart, he will work on you. He is the one who brings forth the fruit when you get that word rooted in you. He is the one who transforms you when you are walking with him because he gives you a revelation that leads to your transformation. You don't have to pretend who you are not in front of the Lord. I know we get on social media and we, we post all our best pictures. I'm posing, I'm smiling, all is good. Look at my family, look at my friends, look at what I'm doing. I'm at the beach, I'm at the lake, I'm at the picnic, I'm out here at the music concert. We post all of our best life on social media. But if you're honest, you know life is not like that. Everybody is dealing with something. And when we put our best face forward, okay, that's a good faith effort. But before God, you don't have to pose. Say, yes, Lord, I'm all that. No, be who you are. Lay it bare before him because God can only help you when you confess that you are in need of his help. You do not have to pre pretend to be who you are not when you go to the Lord. A renewed mind means that you can be yourself and you, be, you can be authentic before God. A renewed mind is being able to mess up without fear of divine retribution. A renewed mind is relaxing in the arms of God, the, having that, ah, oh, it's so glad I can take, I'm so glad I can take my mask off and just be who I am with you, Lord. I, I can be me, I can do me, and I can allow you to work out whatever challenges come in my life. A renewed mind means learning to love the way that Jesus taught us. Uh, a renewed mind means forgiving the way that Jesus for, uh, ask us to forgive so that we can be forgiven. A renewed mind means obeying the way that Christ showed us his obedience, even unto death on a cross. A renewed mind is submitting your will to God just as Jesus submitted. 
A renewed mind empowers you so that you can deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. With a renewed mind, you can relinquish your desires and you can yield to Holy Spirit. With a renewed mind, you can trust God with your whole life, your entire life. Every nook and cranny, no piecemeal, no parceling out this part or that part. Give it all to him. Hallelujah, renewed mind means pressing until every dark spot in your soul is blotted out. Search me, Lord. And if you find anything that shouldn't be, hallelujah. A renewed mind means praying until every wicked thing in you is cast out. A renewed mind is knowing that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the word of the Lord never fails. A renewed mind is not being anxious for anything but with a heart of gratitude bringing everything to God in prayer. Lay it all at the altar and then leave it there and let him handle it. A renewed mind can encourage you in every situation. There's a song that says sometimes you just have to encourage yourself. Amen. Speak into your circumstance. Speak the word that is rooted in you. I always tell people who are starting a new walk with the Lord, just get a couple of verses under your belt that you can speak when you get into a situation. A renewed mind can say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? A renewed mind can say, they that dwell in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. <laughs> a renewed mind says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. No weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me i will condemn this is the heritage of the saints that's what your renewed mind ought to tell you a renewed mind ought to be able to say bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name a renewed mind says bless the lord Oh, my soul, let his praise continually be in my mouth. A renewed mind says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. When you have a renewed mind, you can remind yourself when the enemy tries to tell you something different. You can say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved come on a renewed mind ought to be able to stand up to the enemy and say therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus get thee behind me Satan believers are no longer under the bondage of sin. We are made new and our lives are transformed, church, when we keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Information becomes revelation that leads to transformation. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind then let your life reflect God's perfect will. So the question for you today is, are you operating, are you walking with a renewed mind? Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning and you are not operating with a renewed mind, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior,
and can say with certainty that when the Lord returns, if he was to come this very minute, that you would be going home to glory with him. If you can't say that today, why don't you come and give him your life and give him your heart? Say you believe that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross for your sin and you want to be a part of God's family. Accept his wonderful gift of salvation. And the word, God, uh, the word of God says that when you confess that you are in need of his salvation, that you are a sinner who desires to be saved through Christ, then you are saved. And even if you don't want to come to New Horizons, we will put you in touch with the church home of your choice so that you can be nurtured in the spirit and that you will grow and be transformed. As we sing this morning, if you're here, why don't you come? Hear my humble cry. in glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen.